is collecting puzzle pieces, but not only getting the piece, but putting it into the bigger picture. I wish that I'd had opp the opportunity to do this sooner, honestly, because I feel like this is the kind of thing to have, you know, aetherbunny.com, my space, my little place on the internet, the little dot com at the end. The mark of ownership there is really cool, and the thought that if I wanted to, I could go in and just mess with stuff as much as I want. You know, I can I can futz with the CSS. I don't have to worry about, you know, people on the the, the website, the web service that I'm using, saying we don't really like the way this is going, so we're going to change it up and make the options different. I don't have to worry about that because it's my space. What happened in 2005, 2006 without us knowing it is we started to shape and mold and, and frame a culture of innovation. UMW Blogs. UMW Blogs. UMW Blogs. DS106. 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 Domain of One's Own. Domain of One's Own. Domain of One's Own. This community that we have at Mary Washington that has been driving a lot of this innovation. It's a place to explore and become a part of the community and be connected with with people all over the world. We need to start figuring out ways to kind of reconfigure or create opportunities for collaboration because it's in those spaces that you get a sense of community, you have a synergy, you have an excitement, you hear new ideas and perspectives and I think that's a key element in order to start really thinking about how do we innovate. Yes, you have your random one person who could innovate something, but to change the culture of an institution, you really kind of have to have we're all in this together attitude. I think it gives you a greater sense of the realism of the web. People tend to think of the internet as this, you know, this alternate space where things aren't real, things don't exist. And I remember that's the rhetoric that we grew up with when the internet was just beginning to be part of my life and a bunch of my friends' lives when we were kids, it was always, don't use your real name, don't give out your address, make sure that nobody knows who you are, always use fake, you know, everything and everything, so that no one can ever identify you. But I think as we have grown to interact with the web in more meaningful ways, it is a real space, and it's a real space where real people do real things. And it's okay to have people say, oh, this chick is going to marry Washington and doing all this stuff. Um, and so to be able to aggregate all of those sort of fragmented identities, it, it brings it together in a very real and meaningful way. And it, it makes you realize, you know, I'm not hiding behind these identities anymore. Well, there's no hiding nowadays. Or I am becoming those identities and making that identity part of my personal identity, um, which is really cool. I think I, what I try to do is encourage faculty and administrators to, to think about what they're doing in smaller steps and ask them to really talk to you about what it is they're trying to do, what it is they're trying to enable. Here's the technology, here's its use, don't stray from that. And all too many times you see people who set up WordPress or whatever and they already have a predefined who can use it, how they can use it you know, and how many accounts they can get. And then I think the other thing that happens, and it happens sometimes here, but I think it happens at a lot of other schools, and I hear about this from other people as well, is schools investing in technologies instead of in people. I think UMW is invested in people. Having a group of people who are willing to experiment, who are, who are creative, who, um, who understand and appreciate what it means to work in education, um, and who believe that the work that they do is vitally important. And having, once you have that kind of a group, it's a matter of giving them room to grow and giving them freedom and trusting them. The DTLT has been great. Uh, they've been, it again? DTLT has, DTLT has been great. Uh, they've been fantastic partners throughout this process. Really, for us, that's, that's the group that bridges the gap between the faculty and IT. Um, I think it's scary. Even like four years ago, even three years ago, I would say, okay, we're going to set up, you know, blogs, and they would go, <gasps> I haven't done that before. You're decentralizing it down to the point of the individual, the faculty member, the student. That is a very, very scary notion for folks who want to control the message. But when you look at the flip side of what a liberal arts institution is, that is the message. The message is we don't control here. We foster conversation. 
we enable people to think new ways. So how can you frame that any other way but by a collective voice? It's a safe space in a way. I think faculty who play in the technology world can kind of understand and get it. But I think the hardest part is translating a space like that into in a way so that faculty can start to imagine what it might be like and then also how they might be able to use it for their students. And I think one of the ways that I would do that is to start thinking about how is it that we support our students' development in terms of their capacities to navigate and be in the world. And so I'm really all about empowering students and being an advocate for autonomy. And really the message there, and I think it's something that resonates in a lot of what we do, is that this stuff is not too difficult to understand. It's not, it's not insurmountable. You know, it, a lot of times I think we look for an excuse to say, you know, that's not me. There, there's computer science majors, there's other geeks that can do that kind of thing, but that's not me as an English major or a history major or an art major. You know, that I'll leave that to other people and I can do this. I really want to show students that this is something that anybody can do. And really when you empower them to do that, really the sky's the limit in terms of you know what they're capable of. My experience is uh, if you uh, convey to students what you're trying to do and acknowledge that what you're doing is experimental with, with a certain set of goals, um, they'll go along for the ride. What's really exciting for me is that this is no longer a niche thing that a handful of wacky faculty are trying out on their students. But this has really become mainstream. It's, it's just part of who we are at Mary Washington. Um, and we don't have everybody yet, but, but, but it's growing. Um, and people no longer look at you funny when you tell them that you have your students blogging in, in your classes. And I think that's fantastic.